Sunita, thanks a lot for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So COP28 has been exciting with thousands of people here, a very active presence of the private sector, lots of C-suite conversations, taking the leadership. But as they say, the tone starts at the top. And I was wondering in that context and given the hat you wear, what do you see the role of governance and boards in the climate change conversation? I think the environment has been simultaneously fascinating, stimulating, very inspiring. But as you mentioned, tone starts from the top. And the boardroom, I feel, is not sufficiently represented here. We've got the largest mobilization of the private sector. And the, res the guardians, the long-term stewards of companies are, in, are the board of directors. They need to be aware of the emerging risks that come from the climate emergency. They need to understand how to measure, mitigate this, and of course seize opportunities that are arising. This clearly falls within the ambit of directors' responsibilities. And I would like to see that this very important stakeholder group is better represented at COP. That's right. And I think one of the things boards do really well is to take a longer term view. And if there was one issue that requires a, a long term view but short term action, it's probably climate change. I was wondering if there were some examples that you had in mind of um, good practices in that direction. So in the work that I'm doing at Climate Governance Malaysia, which is part of this global network supported by the World Economic Forum called the Climate Governance Initiative, and also I wear another hat at the CEO Action Network in Malaysia, what I'm seeing is a bifurcation between businesses who still think that this is a reporting and disclosure problem and those businesses who are working hard to embed sustainability into the DNA of their business, they understand that this is a transition which all of society wants to see and they want to be ready to deliver the goods and services which are just cheaper, faster, better and better for the environment. So I do see businesses already working on that. It's very clear not all businesses will survive the transition especially when a negative externality like carbon is being priced. Um, the thought leaders are already looking at nature and biodiversity and planetary boundaries. So I see this very clear bifurcation between those who get it and those who still don't understand the extent of the crisis. Yeah, completely agree. And if you were to ask me, I see the glass is half full and not half empty coming out of COP. But what do you think? I've been so inspired. You know, there are thousands working tirelessly behind the scenes to negotiate as observers, to try and come up with solutions for this seemingly intractable problem. And then there are thousands more, because in total we've got 70,000 people visiting COP this year, right? There are thousands more who are supporting this conversation. People like you and I, you know, who are trying to engage further, push the discourse along, coming up with studies and reports and opinions and insights, just to try and help facilitate this. So I find it tremendously inspiring. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us here today. Thanks and for having um, me. Thank you.